Uh, welcome to Classic Car Cave. Uh, just doing a quick introduction, just doing a little short video here, uh, a bit of a warning for anybody that's going to make a jig or a rotisserie. <clears throat> Not so much the building of the rotisserie, but of the uh, stands or the brackets that you make to hold the body on. Now, obviously, the next K150, this is a chassis, a separate running chassis uh, to the body. Uh, most cars, most cars that are monocoque, um, have um, rigid parts in them. They either have uh, box sections or they they have a chassis integral to the to the whole body, to the unit body. Uh, whereas that's different in this situation. So uh, in the video, what you'll see is uh, there's a slight anomaly here when we have the car inverted to when we have it upright. These gaps we have in the car are just a baseline. Uh, obviously, they all, they all have to be absolutely perfect because the, the shot lines will show up dramatically when it's on. <clears throat> and obviously, we need to put the body, once we've got the rest of these, most of these panels finished, we need to put the body back onto the chassis and bolt it all down and see exactly how the shot lines are. Um, and that will probably be done one or two times. Uh, it's a fair bit of work, as you can imagine, to take a whole body shell and put it back down on the chassis and bolt the whole thing down. But it's, it needs to be done because we need to be absolutely 100% sure that the gaps that we're going for are, are correct. Um, so there's very little flex obviously in the A panel. So if you're not familiar with bodywork or shells, basically your A panel starts from your front windscreen pillar. So A, B and then C would be the rear window in a, in a vehicle. Um, and, and so what we're trying to do, we, we obviously, I obviously can see now by marking it and using a, a gap gauge or a gap gauge tool um, that on the door side of it, even though the, the gaps are not fixed yet, they're not they're completely um, the right um, distance, <coughs> they're just a baseline basically, but um, there's very little movement there between the A panel and the door hinge because it's very strong at that point. And as you go back towards the back of the car to where um, the, the C pillar would be, it, it's a convertible. So obviously there's no roof to give it strength. And this is one of the things about convertibles. You have to be very careful when you set them up on a jig. With a car with a roof on it, it's a completely different ball game because you've got the strength in the roof. You don't have this in a, in a convertible car. So I hope you enjoy the video, I hope you get something from it, but if you are thinking of building a jig, as I've had some people mention to me in the comments, these are things that you need to be very careful of when you invert it and put it upright. Well, you might be able to see these markings here. Um, obviously these are upside down because I put these markings on when it was inverted, when it was upside down, and obviously these show the car the right way up. So you can see, you know, that's upside down, That was when it was inverted it was 8.5, and six here, eight, six, seven, six. Of course, the, these gaps are just, we're just starting with them now. They either have to be built up or taken back. Uh, but what that's showing me that is when it's inverted, um, there is some flex or movement in the back part of it. So it's critical that we put it onto the, uh, onto the chassis to make sure these door gaps are correct the right way up. It seems like it's out of stress now, but it's under, uh, it's obviously under uh, compression or um, it, it, it's, under, it's under compression or tension when it's inverted. There, there's no other reason why. Obviously on the front, conversely, this is different because you've got two huge bonnet hinges. So I'll try and get out the focus, you can see. Whether it's inverted or not, it's 4, 2.5, 2. And that's obviously because the, the A pillar is massive in this and, and it's got massive hinges on, so there's no movement there whatsoever, even though all these gaps have got to be redone. You can see here that line is not, especially there, so that has to be equal, uniformed all the way around. And one of the guys actually made a comment today on the last video about. Uh, the primer saying it's good advice about putting a uniform color. That's the expression I should have used. Thank you for that So there it's okay on and it's the same on the other um, on the other hinge as well uh, You can see there's half a mil difference 
when it's inverted to being upright. So that's three 2.5, so that's half a mil. Three 2.5, three three, four five, 4.5. And then where I'm getting these numbers from is this is a, a, a tool that I got from Frost Restorations. And basically what it is, it's a, it's a gap tool gauge. Um, so Frost Restorations do them in the UK. You can get them from anywhere just about. <clears throat> and if you can't put it in, in its nose all the way in, what you can do, if you've got like a, uh, an area where you can't get it in very far, you can just pop it in at an angle like that. So you can see there that there's two, that's two there, and I can go halfway, so that's about two and a half. Here, same thing, two and a half, and that's, that's three. And then you go to this one, and you can see it's going right in 4.5. And then on the other side, this is ultimately what we'll use to make sure the gaps are completely uniformed all the way down. So again, same situation. You can see four is right on the money. And then this is 2.5, which obviously too narrow. Again there, hopefully this is showing up. And then two, again. And this is showing the same 2.5, but whether it's open or closed, there you go. In fact, it's nearer three. Two point, it's just over there, it's about two eight, two seven. Anyway, these need a lot of work, these, these doors. So, yeah. Um, so obviously what's happening is when it's being inverted, there is definitely some movement or some flex on the back of it, which is a bit a bit worrying. Um, we know it's level, um, but something's obviously happening when we're turning the car upside down. So getting this back onto this chassis is pretty imperative before we do any major, any final decisions on gaps and so on and so forth. Um, so yeah, um, because they have to sit basically on uh, these spaces. These are uh, aluminium spaces here. And there's a special amount of spaces per um, per fitting on the chassis. You can see the ones there, there. Um, and also on the chassis, uh, we use a, um, a, all along the chassis legs here, they use a felt uh, which stops drumming, stops the metal uh, drumming. Now I might change that because it's felt and it's Chances are it will keep the dampness in it. I think I'll end up going for rubber stripping of the same thickness. Um, we'll see. Uh, the rubber may be a bit harder. Maybe the felt is... is but the problem with the felt is I think it will uh, hold water in it. So we'll maybe try it and see, we'll see what the story is. Um, but yeah, this thing needs a really good clean over. It's, uh, it's looking a bit um, messy at the moment. Um, but uh, it's all running, it works great, the brakes, everything works on it. We, I was actually driving the car, so I know everything runs great and it's extremely powerful, so I'm very pleased with it. But we definitely need to get this uh, body back on here and strap it down and make sure that that's, the, and we get a datum line on it because this flex is a bit disconcerting, like I say. I would think if it's an issue, it's the it's, it's just the issue here. But we thought we'd fix this by a, a changing the bolt. We we relaxed it, um, so we took them off the two back ones and relaxed it down, uh, and then redid the bolt holes. So this is something to be careful for. You're making these um, the the jig we can use for any car basically. We just need to adapt it and modify it. But if you're going to build a jig. Um, it's all very well making it straight and all that kind of stuff and adjustable like this one is this this is adjustable here it's adjustable here um, that's great for all intents and purposes but if the if the uh, mountain points are, are, are wrong and especially if there's a lot of flex in it you wouldn't imagine with the weight on that with the kind of weight that's in it, it wouldn't flex that much but it did when we took these back ones off or disconnected them, it dropped down to a neutral point and that's where we re-welded it if you if you get my drift. So yeah, um, so we definitely, definitely need to 
to uh, get it back onto this back onto this chassis which is uh, it's quite a major operation because we have to put it onto this over a gantry which I, I made uh, some time ago we made some time ago um, and it works perfectly on there you can just lift the whole body up and drop it down and uh, we need to make sure that everything goes in because in in reality when this body is painted the doors the, the rear wings nothing will be in it apart from you know the, just the, everything that's welded to it as such so the, the rear wings have to go on separately the doors the bonnet the boot everything has to go on separately but it has to pre-fit correctly um, we, we cannot have a situation where we're moving bolts around after the car has been painted um, as far as that's concerned I've had some questions about the paint the original color on this car was old English white on the heritage certificate uh, it was old English white with black interior um, and I have some photographs I haven't got any copyright things but I have some photographs here of different cars uh, for instance there's there's one in white this is old English white so this is what it'll look like when it's finished um, and this is I've got a few pictures I think this is in the burgundy this is a color that I really like um, if you I'll, I'll cover up these people's faces because they're in the because they're in the picture. Hang on, but that's what it would look like. So it's in uh, it's burgundy and tan, which I think is a beautiful colour. This won some kind of concourse uh, in America, uh, and I'll maybe show you. I'll put some pictures up uh, in this video now and show you what this car looks like. Um, with the detail in it is absolutely gorgeous. It's been beautifully done. So I'll, I'll uh, put some uh, small footages up of the proposal of the car or the colour, what, what the base coat will be. So this is the uh, colour I'm proposing. I would like to do it. I think it's really nice. I think that tan and, and uh, burgundy is a, is a great colour. You can see what it looks like with the roof up. Uh, you, you can always tell an OTS because the, this roof folds back underneath the car behind the seats. Uh, just to give you a um, this is uh, a website you could go and have a look at if you wanted to but just to give you an idea of what the interiors um, look like when they're done um, here's a nice one here you see it's beautiful interior that tan is gorgeous um, so that's the, that's the kind of colour that we're, we're looking at and the only difference internally is this is um, how it's finished you can see here on the, in this one, for instance, this has got the wooden dash in it. What we've got for, for ours is where this leather is here and here, it's wood right the way across. So it's walnut across, and obviously this will not be in it. This is an air conditioning unit, but ours will be done in wood. Normally this was done in gray leather, um, and both sides, I have we have had the wood made for both sides, so it's a um, veneer. So on, the, on that note, I hope you like the proposed uh, colour and I use this site a lot for, for checking uh, some of the things that we need to do. You can see it's got just about everything in there right from, if I, if I take you down, you can see it right from, there you go, there's, there's where it's just been done in primer and look at the gaps on that, absolutely spot on. So stay safe, keep the faith, enjoy your hobby. Catch you on the next one. Bye.